Hello. In this video, I provide a demonstration of how to carry out and interpret an ordinal logistic regression using SPSS. A link for the data that's used, as well as this PowerPoint, will be made available for download underneath the video description. Additionally, a running document containing links to other videos on logistic regression and using other programs will be made available as well. So if you find the video and materials useful, please take time to like the video and share the link with others. And also please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. So let's start off with an overview. Binary logistic regression is utilized in those cases when a researcher is modeling a predictive relationship between one or more independent variables and a binary dependent variable. Although this is probably the most common form of logistic regression that's utilized in research, there are other logistic regression models that can be useful when your dependent variable is not binary and or the categories are unordered or ordered. Multinomial logistic regression, or MLR, is generally used when you have more than two categories on the dependent variable that are unordered. Ordinal logistic regression, or OLR, is generally used when you have categories for the dependent variable that are ordered. Although it is permissible to utilize MLR to analyze data involving an ordered categorical dependent variable, OLR is generally preferable. Unlike MLR, which produces multiple sets of regression coefficients and associated tests, OLR yields only a single set of regression coefficients to estimate relationships between independent and dependent variables. As such, OLR will provide a more parsimonious representation of the data than MLR when the dependent variable is ordered. Nevertheless, when the proportional odds assumption is violated, then MLR provides a viable alternative to OLR. So the scenario for our uh, uh, examples involve uh, student level data and what we're going to be doing is trying to predict student interest for the next topic in class as a function of several variables. First, pass uh, basically is an indicator of whether a student passed or failed a previous subject matter test. Pass is a binary variable that's coded 0 for failed, 1 for passed. Gender identification, which is coded 0 for male identified and 1 for identified as female. Then we have uh, measures of mastery goals and fear of failure, and both of those two variables are treated as continuous. And the interest variable, which is our ordered categorical variable, basically our dependent variable in our models, uh, is coded 1 for low interest, 2 for medium interest, and 3 for high interest. So in SPSS, there are a couple of routes that you can take to uh, perform an ordinal logistic regression. The first route basically involves going through analyze and using the regression module and then going down to ordinal. When you, uh, when you click on ordinal, as you do right here, this box on the right will open up. You'll move the dependent variable to the dependent box and your independent variables to the covariates box. Um, if you happen to have a factor variable or you're treating a variable as a factor, you're going to move it to the factor box right here. Now, pass and gender identification, those two variables are both uh, binary variables. Obviously, they're categorical variables, but it is permissible to include binary variables in a regression model as a covariate. Um, and note, too, that both of them have already been dummy coded. We can click on the output button. And right here, you'll get a, a set of defaults. And then I've also clicked right here for tests of parallel lines. So let's walk through the steps in real time. So here we have our data opened up in SPSS. Again, we're regressing the uh, interest level variable onto the remaining variables. And so you, you can see we have gender identification, fear of failure, mastery goals, and pass. So what we're going to do is go to analyze, go to regression, then go down to ordinal, click on it. I'm going to go and reset this. We'll move our dependent variable to this box. Our independent variables will go down under covariates. Under output, we'll click on tests of parallel lines, continue, and then OK. And so now we have all of our output. OK, 
Okay, so now let's look at some our output uh, in a little bit more detail. So the model fitting information uh, that you see on the right contains the negative two log likelihoods from an intercept only model and the full model, which contains the full set of predictors or independent variables. We also have a likelihood ratio chi-square test to test whether there's a significant improvement in fit of the final model relative to the intercept only or null model. So in this case we see a significant improvement in fit uh, between the two models. So in the long and short of it is, is that um, if this test is indicating statistical significance, then that would be an indicator that our full model containing the, the full set of independent variables represents a significant improvement in fit over the null. The goodness of fit table contains the deviance and Pearson chi-square test, which are also useful for evaluating overall model fit to the data. So non-significant test results are indi indicators that the model fits the data well. So just as a recap, um, if our likelihood ratio test under the model fitting information, if that's statistically significant, then that's an indicator of good model fit relative to the null or intercept only model. Uh, these tests right here are additional um, tests of fit and if they are non-significant then that's an indicator that the model is a good fit to the data and let me just note too that it's not always the case that they will agree uh, but most of the time they probably will so between these test results we have evidence that our model is fitting the, the data well next we have pseudo r square values that are treated as rough analogs to R-square values in OLS regression. In general, there's no strong guidance in the literature on how these should be used or interpreted, so uh, I would say interpret these with caution. Here we have the regression coefficients and significance tests for each of the independent variables in the model. The regression coefficients are literally interpreted as the predicted change in log odds of being in a higher as opposed to lower category on the dependent variable per unit increase on the independent variable. So as such, we interpret a positive estimate in the following way. For every one unit increase on an independent variable, there's a predicted increase of a certain amount in the log odds of falling at a higher level on the dependent variable. So more generally, this indicates that as scores increase on an independent variable, there is an increased probability of falling at a higher level on the dependent variable. We interpret a negative estimate in the following way. For every one unit increase on an independent variable, there is a predicted decrease of a certain amount in the log odds of falling at a higher level of the independent variable. So again, more generally, this indicates that as scores increase on an independent variable, there is a decreased probability of falling at a higher level on the dependent variable. So without going too far into the weeds, um, and note again that you can download this PowerPoint and you can get a lot more details, we can see that uh, both mastery goals and pass, both of these coefficients are positive and statistically significant. So basically, students who passed the previous subject matter tests were more likely to fall into the uh, higher uh, interest category than those who, who uh, did not pass, and students who had higher mastery goals were more likely to fall into a higher interest category than those uh, with lower levels of mastery goals. Here we have the test of propor proportional odds, and if this is non-significant, then that would be an indicator that the assumption is met, and so that actually happens to be the case with our analysis. So now let's look at Route 2 through SPSS. So one downside of using the previous uh, set of options is that we cannot get odds ratios that would reflect the changing odds of a case falling at a next higher level on the dependent variable. Moreover, the test results of the test results associated with the independent variables are based solely on the wall test, and these results can be less powerful than test results based on the use of likelihood ratio chi-square tests. So we can use the generalized linear models option in SPSS to obtain this additional information. So let's go ahead and walk through um, the uh, steps to do this. So we're going to go to Analyze, go to Generalized Linear Models, click on uh, this button right here, and I'm actually going to go ahead and reset things. Click on Type of Model, on that tab, we're going to click on Ordinal Logistics. So this button right here, it may be a little hard to see, but it's under Ordinal Response. We'll click on response. We're going to move the interest level variable over to the dependent variable box. We'll click on predictors 
and again we're just going to move all of our uh, predictors over to the covariates box again if we had uh, factor variables or variables that we're treating as factors we'd be moving it to the factors box we'll click the model tab and move all of our um, independent variables over to the model uh, box right here we'll go ahead and leave estimation alone but under statistics we're going to go ahead and click on likelihood ratio which you can see I've just clicked right here and then we're also going to click on include exponential parameter estimate so let me just go ahead and do that and we'll click on OK and so now we get our results so first off we have a table of various goodness of fit measures uh, you'll notice that although the Pearson chi-square and deviance appear in this table test results are not provided as we saw in the goodness of fit table via route 1 nevertheless both values and degrees of freedom are provided which could be used to test for model fit using the chi-square distribution but of course it's probably less work just to go ahead and, and obtain the test results uh, via uh, route 1 this is the likelihood ratio chi-square test that we saw uh, via route 1 and again we see that our full model was a significant improvement in fit over the null uh, model looking at our test results here you can see uh, up here we have our likelihood ratio chi-square test associated with each of our predictor variables and then down below again we have our walled chi-square test uh, of the uh, regression coefficients for each of our predictors so these are the p-values for the walled test and up here we have the p-values from the likelihood ratio test Okay, so you also see uh, in the parameter estimates table, we've got the column of odds ratios. So basically, um, that's, you know, that's the main difference that we saw uh, between the two routes. Now the odds ra ratios reflect the multiplicative change in the odds of being in a higher category on the dependent variable for every one unit increase on the independent variable. An odds ratio that's greater than 1 suggests an increasing probability of being at a higher level on the dependent variable as values on an independent variable increases, whereas a ratio less than 1 suggests a decreasing probability with increasing values on an independent variable. An odds ratio equal to 1 suggests no predicted change in the likelihood of being in a higher category as values on an independent variable increase. So without going uh, too far into uh, every single one of these odds ratios, I'll leave it to you to go through the PowerPoint uh, where I describe what these values are representing. Now finally, as I stated before, it is possible to analyze the same data using um, MLR or basically multinomial logistic regression. So I thought I would just do a quick walkthrough of that and show you what the results look like. So we'll go back to our, uh, our SPSS file. We'll go under Analyze, Regression, go down to Multinomial Logistic. So you can see right here I've moved the dependent variable interest level over to this box. Reference category I've actually set it at first. And then I've moved my independent variables to the covariates box right here. Under Statistics I've asked for a few things such as Classification Table and Goodness of Fit. And then also Likelihood Ratio Test is selected as well. Um, so anyway, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click on continue and then on OK. And so now you'll notice when we look at our output, we still have our model fitting information. This is a likelihood ratio test comparing our full model with the full set of independent variables against a null model. So you can see it's statistically significant, uh, suggesting that our full model represents a significant improvement in fit relative to the null model. The goodness of fit measures are both non uh, tests are, are non-significant with respect to Pearson's chi-square and, and deviance uh, chi-square. So uh, that's also indicating good model fit. We also see pseudo R-square values, and then scrolling down, we've got likelihood ratio tests and the parameter estimates table. And then finally, scrolling down, you also have classification results. So again, had the proportional odds assumption been violated, then this would have been a uh, viable route to take to analyze our data. So that concludes this uh, video uh, demonstration. Uh, be sure to check out the re references and resources at the back of the um, PowerPoint, um, and it will provide uh, guidance as to other uh, places you might go to learn more about ordinal logistic regression. 
Again, if you like the video and the materials, uh, please take time to like the video and share it with others. And I appreciate you watching.